We said you can introduce a parameter, a separate other variable, right? Which is like a measurement beside all your other measurements, your x's and y's that you're used to. And the classic example that I gave you, which you're already familiar with, is the unit circle, okay? The parameter that we tend to work with for the unit circle, and really any circle, is that angle formed at the origin between whatever line goes to a point on the circumference, interval, I should say, and the positive x-axis. So, no big deal, okay? That's the parameter, and that will define uniquely any point on the circle given these parametric equations. x equals cos theta, y equals sine theta, that is the parametric representation of the unit circle. More or less anything, right, that you think of as a function, you can replace the x and y with something related to a parameter, right? So for example, when you have a look through your textbook, you can take a linear function, or a circle, or a hyperbola, this guy. In fact, even though you, I don't think it's as useful, right, the parameter for this is really obvious, like it's a very obvious way to state it, because we know what the Cartesian equation of such a hyperbola is. It is y equals 1 on x, right? So if, for instance, you say, let's put a point here, and um, we'll call the x value t, okay, we'll call it t. Because y is equal to whatever the reciprocal of the x value is, right, 1 over x, then this, I will just be one saying the reciprocal of this, right? 1 on t. So x equals t, y equals 1 on t is a parametric representation of that hyperbola. And obviously, we can, we can vary these however we like. We'll get a different hyperbola, OK? But what we're really focusing on, the, um, the, the main course really is the parabola, OK? The most interesting things come out of the parabola. And um, yeah, the most insights, OK? So here's my question, right? On the unit circle, the parameter, like what is the parameter? And the answer is it's an angle, okay? And that's why we call it theta and not just some random letter because we tend to use theta for angles. So if that is what the parameter is referring to, and like in my previous example, the parameter is like a temperature or you know longevity or whatever, what is the parameter for this parametric representation of the parabola? This is, I should say, this is the standard parametric representation of the parabola in exactly the same way that x squared equals 4ay is the sort of it's the it's the locus representation of the parabola which goes through the origin because it gives you a locus feature namely the focal length right there okay so what is t what is t i'm going to help you see what t is okay by pulling out something which um, we haven't looked at for a little while the calculus okay so have a look at this guy we all just think about it in Cartesian terms first because that's how we've met calculus before and differentiation. If I wanted to differentiate this, probably the easiest way to get dy or dx is first to make y the subject. Okay, so let's do that. If I make y the subject, I'm going to have y equals y equals x squared on 4a. I'm just dividing through by this coefficient. You happy? Okay. So from there, now that y is the subject, it's pretty easy to work out dy and dx. Don't forget, a is, a is the focal length. It's just a number. Okay, so I don't need to worry about it as a variable. I just treat it as a constant. dy and dx. OK, let's have a go. So this x squared up the top becomes 2x on 4a. And then I can just cancel a tiny, tiny bit, x on 2a. Now, by itself, that doesn't tell you anything particularly groundbreaking, right? But now let's think about the parametric representation. Let's bring this guy in, okay? So I'll put in a little subheading so you can see that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in a different direction, right? Now considering the parameter, what additional insight does thinking about it parametrically give us, right? In the similar way that what, what insight does thinking about theta give us on the unit circle? And the maths is very simple, right? The, the algebra is very simple. If I know that x equals 2at, then dy on dx will be x, that's 2at, on 2a. Do you, do you see that? Okay. So just simple cancelling gives me this. So what is the parameter in this representation of the parabola? And the answer is the parameter t 
is the gradient wherever you are. That, that's what the derivative tells you, right? So for instance, if I say, all right, uh, 2at at squared, right? 2at at squared, okay? If I say something like t equals 1, t equals 1, right? Um, and let's pick a value of a, say a is 1, that's simple enough, okay? So this is x squared equals 4y, okay? So that will be this, right? In fact, if I remember correctly, this is question 1 in the exercise you got, okay? So if I say t equals 1 for this parabola, right? When t equals 1, where am I? In the same way that when I say, you know, when theta equals 30 degrees, where am I, okay? The x and y coordinates are just going to be 2, 1. Yeah? Have I just substituted correctly? Uh, yes, I have. So therefore, what this says is, at 2, 1, the parameter, the gradient, is 1. That makes sense. Here's x squared equals 4y, right? 2, 1, somewhere about there. And sure enough, if I were to draw that tangent, it ought to have a gradient of 1. What if I said, how about t equals negative 1? I'm going to be on the opposite side, right? I'm going to be wherever I need to be on the parabola, such that the gradient of the tangent will be negative 1. That's what the parameter is. The parameter can be an angle. In this case, it's a derivative. It's the gradient. Okay. Now, just as a quick note, this is all fine. That's really the result I wanted to show you. But we can take it one step further. We didn't need to think about this. We need to go to Cartesian terms in order to get this result. We could have gone straight from the Cartesian, sorry, straight from the parametric equations. Watch. What I want is dy and dx, right? You can't d get dy and dx directly out of either of these equations, right? Because this x is really a function of t, right? You remember this when we were doing sunscreen as a function of temperature? And this guy, y, is also a function of t. <coughs> so being that x is a function of t and y is a function of t, it makes sense to differentiate them with respect to whatever variable they're in terms of, namely t. Okay. So we can work out each of these independently. dx on dt. Okay. I'm treating t as the variable. 2a is just the constant hanging out the front. So what's dx on dt? It's just 2a. That t is a t to the power of 1, so the power reduces and it just disappears. I can do the same process for dy on dt, right? t is my variable, so my power is going to come out the front and then reduce by 1. So I get 2at. Are you happy with that? Now the reason I did those is because what I really want is dy on dx, right? Now think back, think back to chain rule. These three here form a chain of derivatives, right? The dy and the dx that I want, they're here and here. And what I need to get rid of, what I'm trying to do is eliminate out that dt, right? In the similar way that I was eliminating out the parameter. Okay. So how am I going to write this? I want the dy on the top, and I want the dx on the bottom, and I want my dt's to cancel. You see that? So this is just chain rule. You've seen this before. Okay. Now dy and dt, I already know what that is. That's 2at. dt on dx, be careful. I don't have dt on dx. I have its reciprocal, dx on dt. No big deal. Right. I'll just flip it upside down. And of course, we get the same result out that we expected. Okay. So you can think about it in merely parametric terms. You can go directly from here to see the meaning of the parameter. So keep this in your back pocket. It's going to become very significant. But every time you get a given a question, and you're like, OK, try t equals this. Try t equals that. What you're really finding is the gradient at whatever point you're interested in. That's what the parameter is for this representation.